Hello everybody, it's Mark Rivera back with another comic book haul, so let's get to it. Alright, so before we begin, uh, I just want to talk about a, a an issue I was running into with my phone. I actually tried to record this video about a week ago, and um, for some reason I was losing storage on my phone. And I come to find out that a lot of my storage issues was coming through from the YouTube app. And just for the life of me, I couldn't figure out, like, why am I still so short on storage? I delete my videos and stuff. So, more or less, the YouTube app, I guess it kind of stores catch data. If uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you watch, like, a lot of videos, that stuff kind of gets stored on your phone. So, uh, before I did this video, I did some research, and luckily, YouTube... <laughs> You can find a lot of stuff on YouTube, a lot of things, how to get around that, and I did. So, the long story short is, like, if you watch YouTube a lot and stuff, it, it kind of, like, records the data, and that starts to build over time. So, I'll give you an example. My, the app itself on my phone is, like, 200 and something megabytes, but my catch data, if I'm, if I'm saying this correctly, was, like, 9 gigs, and I couldn't get that off my phone. Like I deleted my videos when I record them. And so come to find out the easiest way to resolve that issue is to simply delete the app. Now keep in mind, you have to remember your password to log back into YouTube. So if anybody's running into that same issue, all you got to do is just delete the YouTube app off your phone and we'll clear all that off. And you should, like, I went from, like, 9.1 gigs to, like, 2.1 megabytes. So, just wanted to pass that along to anybody else who might be running into the same issue. You know, like, I don't understand why I'm losing all this, like, why all this data is building on my, on my YouTube app. So, that's the easiest way to resolve it. So, now we can get to the whole video. This centers around my, uh, my... 2021 Tampa Bay Comic Con haul that I did, which would have been two weeks. Yes, two weeks. No, a week ago. Last weekend. Um, whatever that day was. Today is, what, the 8th, I believe. Uh, so, this is pretty much my haul. Uh, but first things first, I want to get to this. I'll show this book first. Now... This book is not mine. This was a purchase for my older brother who is now... Because he watches my videos and he kind of wanted to figure out how to get into this where you could make money. You know, because I tell him I've had a lot of success doing that. So he kind of wanted to dip his foot into these waters. So he gave me a, a little bit of money to take with me. I've been actually holding on to for a while and... I ended up finding this book for him because I really think it's a very good book to make some money on even down the road. Um, I actually wanted to buy this book for myself, but then I changed my mind and said, you know what, I think this is a good book to get into right now. I think there's a lot of room to grow. So I ended up picking this book up for him for 180 bucks. And you tell me if this was a good deal. Hopefully I can get this to zoom in. Come on, little camera. I mean, it presents super well. I think there's some very minor staining. I just know this corner right here is probably the biggest issue. There's a couple color breaks in the corner there. And the only other thing was, um, if anybody doesn't know, this is Tomb of Dracula number one. First uh, Dracula, first Van Housing, first Frank Drake. Um, this is from April of 1972. The only other issue was that this was signed on the first page at the bottom by Gene Collin. And I believe he did the interior art for this. Uh, and I think that's why the book, honestly, I thought this book would be around like 300 because of the condition, but I think what knocked it down in price was 
the signature on the inside first page at the bottom or you know who knows when this was signed could have been signed during the 80s or whatever but if anybody you knows been collecting comic books for a long time most of these artists or writers and stuff around that p period they had them sign on the inside at the bottom of the first page so i thought this was a really good buy for its price and i it was one of those situations where i went to the booth and i walked away and it kept bothering me i'm like this is in really good shape and i think i gave this he had it at 200 180 cash bought it and i thought this was a good uh, jumping off point for my older brother to get into comics and you know kind of show him the ropes and how you could you know get into things and then you buy and hold and you know when to flip it I think this is a really good book I like I said I for, initially I wanted to buy it for myself but I said that this is a really good book to get into for him so yeah all right uh I'm not going to show these in any particular order. I'm just going to grab them and show them. I'm not going to, you know, because my, my trend is I usually hold the better books at the end. I'm just, let's, you know, I'm just want to get through this. So, um, I ended up picking up now. Oh, by the way, um, the, uh, my books I bought for myself, they all came out to about $5 and 50 cents a piece. Cause I always do a breakdown that way. What I spent and then break it down how many books I bought. So. All right, we've got Count Ducula number three and number four. Now, apparently, I thought this was the first appearance of Danger Mouse. This is not. Number two is, it is first Danger Mouse solo story. Um, this is from March of 89. Number four is from April of 89. Um... So, hmm, I really thought this that this was the first Danger Mouse. It's not. It's number two. And I'm pretty sure I saw a number two at the show, but for whatever reason, I was thinking this was it. So just for anybody that heads up out there, number two is the one you really want. So not that the books are going for anything crazy, but I grew up there in the 1980s, and I can still hear the Danger Mouse theme on TV when I'd be homesick. You know, so I figured I'd pick this up. Now, I my question to you guys is, now, would you consider that a first cover appearance, or would you consider this a first cover appearance? So, you know, comment below. Let me know what you guys would consider a first cover appearance. So, yeah. Happy to get these. They're in actually in really good shape. My number, my other number three is, smells like smoke. Pretty much, so it was nice to get that number three upgrade, and now I gotta get a number two. Uh, I was really happy to see this. I saw this book in a previews, and I was like, oh my god, this is really cool. But I ended up finding it at the show, so we got Marvel, uh, Marvel's Anointed, or Noted. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, this is from June of 2019. I just, that Alex Ross cover is absolutely awesome. Nice Galactus, nice Silver Surfer cover. It's probably one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. So I was happy to get that. Really happy to get this. I got this. I I saw, I think, one or two other guys uh, selling this book for like above $10. Like I said, I didn't pay $10 for this. So this is Visionaries, number one from the cartoon series. And this is from November of 87. I've been been trying to get all these like 80s cartoon series books because they're starting to get a little bit tougher especially even though it's marvel it's star comics so i was really happy to get that uh, buh, buh, buh. picked up a copy of thunderbolts number one volume three that is from February of 2013. There's a little tan mark up there. Or uh, ink mark for whatever reason. Really happy to find this. Marvel Spotlight number 7. Third appearance of Ghost Rider. This is from December of 1972. I was really happy to find that. I missed out on a chance to get a second appearance. But hey, I'll take the third appearance. Ba -ba -ba. Justice Society of America, number 23, volume 3. 
This is first cameo appearance of Mary Marvel as a member of the Black Marvel family. This is from March of 2009. I think it's time to start picking this book up for obvious reasons. The Black Adam cover. Um, I'm actively trying to look for newsstands of this. It is so, so hard, but for the price I paid for this, I think it's a good book to start picking up now. Uh, Journey into Mystery 519. I think I showed this book a little while ago, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what it was. I want to say I thought it was the the last issue, but it's not. I can assure you that. So, Journey into Mystery 519, Volume 1. This is from um, April of 98, and it's a newsstand copy. I just can't figure out the significance of it, so... Maybe it has something to do with the Black Widow thing. I don't know. Really happy to... I was so stoked to find this. Marvel Premiere, number 10. First appearance of Shuma, uh, Shuma Gorath. Death of the Ancient One. And this is when Doctor Strange becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. This is from... Uh, September of 1973. Yeah, September of 1973. Really happy to get that. Now I have, I think I have the five and now I've got the 10. I was, I've been looking for this book for like uh, at least a couple years. And then when the news broke on the Doctor Strange 2 movie, I was like, oh gosh, now I'm never going to find this book for a reasonable price. Let me tell you something. I found it for a very reasonable price, and it's in pretty darn good shape. So, uh, this was kind of an upgrade buy, uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leave it for the price I got it. This is Adventure into Fear, number ten. This is the first solo Man Thing story, and this is from October of 1972. That's uh, an upgrade copy. I have. This is my second number ten. I have multiple copies of number eleven. So, really happy to get these. Let me do this real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Put these back in the box. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Fist of the North Star, number one. This is from 1989. Grab that. Come on. And I was really happy to find this. This is Battle of the Planets. It's done. It's from the Gold Key Run. This is from June of 1979. This is the first team appearance of G-Force and first appearance of Zoltar. I was really happy to find that. Because that book was, I think that's been optioned or it's going to be a TV show. But I know that book has gone up. So definitely got it for a great price. Uh, actually been looking for this. Um, this is Gen 13 Bootleg number 18. This is from May of 1998. This is a nice Bruce Tim cover. Got that. Uh, then we have Rat Queens number one. This is from September of 2013. This is an uh, one in the one in ten variant. So I grabbed that. I do believe they're going to eventually do something with this down the road. So, but I think that's like my second or third copy of the 1 in 10 variant. I just um, don't come across those too often. And I've never come across that book. So, I wasn't going to pass them up. Uh, I got some more 80s TV show uh, cartoon books. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Defenders of the Earth, number one. This is from January of 1987. This is the first, first team appearance of Defenders of the Earth. Nice newsstand copy. And then I don't, I never watched Defenders of the Earth. Like I was still doing Transformers and some G.I. Joe. And I don't know if GoBots was still around it, but I didn't watch Defenders of the Earth. And then we have Air Raiders, number one. This is from November of 1987. 
got that. Now, I, I know my buddy down the street had that toy, so, but I never, another show I never watched. Uh, these next couple of, well, I guess, well, that's, that's, so what have we got here? Okay. So, the next five books are one in 50 variants. Um, we have Axis, or is it, oh, Avengers versus X-Men, right? Or whatever it is. The series is called Axis. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, number one, this is from December of 2014. That is a 1 in 50 variant. And then, it's another, there's another variant to this cover that's a 1 in 50. Got that. So, I believe, I already have copies of both, but they're kind of high ratio, so I wasn't going to leave them. And then we have issue number six. This is from January of 2015. Nice Dr. Strange cover. And then we have issue number seven. From February 2015. Obviously there's a connecting. So got those. And then the last one of the, that run is issue... Number eight, this is from February of 2015. So I was happy to get those 1 in 50 variants. And then another book was this Lumber Jeans uh, Gotham Academy, number one. This is from June of 2016. This is a 1 in 10 variant, like a virgin variant. So I believe I have like one or two copies of this already, but I'll take them. see here i was really happy to find this i actually been kind of like looking for this on the side i just never find never find the first issue this is kill or be killed number one this is from august of 2016 so i was really happy to find that and then i've been i'm gonna start picking more of this book up um this is Image First Saga number one. This is from January of 2017. So, to my knowledge, there are th three different versions of this book. And they the differences are the back covers. So, that's how you can usually tell what year it is. I believe they did a 2013 one, and then a 2014, and then a 2017. And I forget which one is the lower printed of the three, but... I I got plenty of copies of this now, the 2017 version, so I'll be looking for the earlier versions to get those. All right, uh, ba ba ba, Uncanny X Men 282, first cameo appearance of Bishop, first cover appearance of Bishop, first team appearance, first team cameo appearance of X. S.E. This is from the Volume 1 run of X-Men, and this is from November of 91. This copy isn't in the best shape in the world, but I wasn't going to leave it for the price I ended up getting it for. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit beat up on the sides, so, but hey. Uh, some more ratio variants I picked up. This is Spider-Woman number 5 from the Volume 5 series. This is the 1 in 25 variant. This is from April of 2015. Uh, then we have Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier number 1. This is from December of 2014. This is another 1 in 25 variant. So these high ratio, these ratio variants are high ratio variants. If I can get them for cheap, I'm going to buy them. Uh, let's keep it moving. Gen 13, number one. This is from February of 94. The only reason I bought it was because it was a newsstand. 
And I was kind of happy to find this book. I don't come across that often. This is Batman, a double feature. It had, it reprints issues 608 and 609. And this is from 2003. So it's part of that Hush Story arc. I was happy to find that double feature issue. Uh, I don't know why I bought this. I thought it was something. It's, it's junk. I'd even put the date on it, actually, now I think about it. This is from 83. I don't know which month. Oh, March of 83. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 250. It's a new stand. Like I said, I thought I bought it for another reason, but it's nothing. I was really happy to find these. Apparently, this was kind of a hot-selling book at the show, and I managed to find these for a very reasonable price. This is a Marvel Team-Up King Size Annual Number 1. This is the first full appearance of the new X-Men team. And this is from December of 1976. So I picked up one, two, and three copies of that book. They're all in very different conditions, but for the price I got them, um, I wasn't going to leave them, considering what this book is going for right now. Uh, there, uh, for where, I remember where I got these. And the guy says, yeah, because I went on a Saturday. I didn't go on a Friday. I couldn't take the time off of work. And the guy was like, yeah, man, people were buying these left and right from my booth. And I didn't know why, but so they had left some. So I was like, that's fine with me. I'll take them. Let's see here. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, number 100. This is from the Volume 1 series. This is from... July of 1979, the death of Belit, I believe, how you pronounce her name. I don't know if people are paying attention. Some of these Conan books are starting to pick up steam now, so anytime I come across a lot of Conan, I take my time and figure out what the keys are and I buy them. So you might want to start doing the same too. Uh, the next book is, I was really happy to find this, really happy to find this. This is Star Wars Shadow of the Empire, number two. This is the first appearance of a character named Dash Rendar and the first cameo appearance of Zuckus. Now, if anybody remembers, I was, um, after I graduated from high school, and even before I graduated from high school in 96, I was buying that when the new wave of Star Wars figures came out in 94, I believe, and right somewhere in 1996, and I believe I had already graduated at the time, they were ringing out the Shadows of the Empire uh, series of figures. And this is where this character is from, was the figure line. So now I don't know if the figure is made first and then the book was made first or vice versa, but I was very happy to find this book. I think this is a very undervalued a Star Wars book right now because Dash Rendar is pretty much another Han Solo character. A smuggler has a ship kind of like the Millennium Falcon. They're kind of in that same classification of ship except his is a little bit different. So, but yeah, really happy to find this. Get away. And we're down to the last four books. Uh, bu -bu -bu. G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 155 and a half, the free comic book day issue from 2010. This is actually from May of 2010. I was actually really happy to find it. I had seen somebody show this book not too long ago, and that's why I grabbed it. I don't think it goes for much on eBay, but... I found it. I, I like I said, all these books were like five 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 dollars fifty cents a piece, so I wasn't gonna leave it. Uh, but, but, but the next book we have is X Men Alpha number one. This is from February of nineteen ninety five, and there's a bunch of first appearances in here. Uh, first Dark Beast, first 
Holocaust, First Abyss, First Morph, First Charles Lanshear. I hope I pronounced that right, Lanshear. So I was really happy to find this. People are asking about like $20 for this book on eBay, $15, $20. Now there is a gold there is a gold edition to this that people I think that goes for like $150. I'd like to find one of those. But it's so funny because I mean, if anybody's been collecting for a long time, I mean, how many times do you pass this book up in dollar bins? So now this is like a good $20 book now, so. And then finally, we come to the final two books, and it's kind of poetic that these are the last two books. Um, so I'll show these first, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, X-Men, number one... Volume 2 series, uh, you have first X-Men Gold, first X-Men Blue Team, first appearance of the Acolytes, and first, depending on which book it is, first cameo appearance of Omega Red. This is from October of 1991. I was in 8th grade, I believe, when this book came out. So I picked up that cover. And that cover, I never thought we would see the day <laughs> that these books would be worth anything. Considering that they printed over 8 million copies of this book. It is the most highly printed book of all time for a premiere issue, I believe. And I just, I, I, like I said, if anybody has been collecting for a while, God, how many times have you seen this in quarter bins? 50 cent bins and dollar bins and just never would think ever that this book would be worth more than five dollars i've seen issues sold for 20 i've seen issues sold for 10 i've seen people ask 20 just not alone for this just for the regular other issues the magneto cover and all that i just i'm just it's it's the state the market's in right now is that a book like this demands that kind of money which is insane so but yeah that's gonna be it ladies and gentlemen you know that's my 2021 tampa bay uh comic-con haul um overall it was okay i think uh my best buy even though it wasn't for me was probably that tomb of dracula um little side note when you guys do these cons the one thing i always look for is just not the guys that are selling comics you gotta check the booths out that are selling toys because that's where i got a lot of these other books from was a guy that was tucked away on the side that was selling toys and he had like eight or nine short boxes of comics and i actually did really well there so that's another thing you guys want to start doing is Looking for booths that sell toys because I on more than one occasion I have done very well. So because their concentration is the toys and getting the toys out, not so much the comic books, they're easier to cut deals with. So but um yeah, so my next step is there is the show in Lakeland next month. I'm gonna do there's supposedly a show in Fort Myers at the end of the month. That I'm definitely going to do. And then uh, I'm going to, to Fanboy Expo this month to get a, try to get a couple signatures. So maybe I'll find some books out there too at that event. I've been to Fanboy before in Orlando. So, but um, yeah, that's my haul, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, um, please hit the bell, hit the like button, hit the notification button. Leave a comment and I will see you guys again the next time.